Welcome back to the chat. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion about nursing and Florence Nightingale and the impact she had. Um, we have Tristan Beavers, BSN, Misty Hutchison, LPN, and myself, Alina Rudinska, and RN. So Misty, tell me what it's like being an LPN. Um, as an LPN, I went to school for um, one year in a community college or a technical school. Um, and I basically work at nursing homes or um, doctor's offices. Um, I basically basically do patient care, um, and I kind of assist RNs and the needs that they have. Okay. Um, well, myself, as an RN, I work in a hospital, personally, and what I do is assess patients. I do nursing diagnosis on them, and when it comes to st um, starting IVs and pushing meds, that's something that I do as well. And then Tristan here at BSN, what is it like in your position? Um, I take on more of the... Um, lead role, the administrative role. I am a charge nurse for an intensive care unit. I kind of look over my RNs and some LPNs that work for me and just make sure that they're doing what they should and if they have any questions, they can come ask me. All right, thank you. So let's go back into time of how really nursing evolved. The Crimean War was when it sort of all started off there was a lot of countries um, that were involved with this war, and a big issue during that time was the fact that the lack of care for the troops. Right. There were so many wounded soldiers, and there was nobody taking care of them. Some of the different countries started having um, care sent, while England had nobody taking care of their troops. So the Secretary of War contacted Florence Nightingale, and he actually arranged for her to go there and take care of the troops. When she got there, she was just baffled by the fact that these troops were just lying in these dirty hospitals with nobody taking care of them. There was nothing there. So no. she made it her mission to provide these people with care. And today we have Juan Guzman out on campus interviewing students just to see where they stand with their knowledge on how nursing impacted wars and how it evolved throughout our time. Brian Can you tell me anything about the Korean War? Uh, I have no clue about that. No clue? Do you know anything about Florence Nightingale? I wish I did. <laughs> well, that concludes our interview. Thanks, Juan. Now, Misty, tell us a little bit about the Civil War and what was going on throughout those years. Yeah, the Civil War um, went from 1861 to 1865. Um, many nurses actually died on the front line and also died because of poor conditions um, in the hospitals. And um, in the North, 100 um, women went through a training with uh, Miss Dorothea Dix, who actually became the superintendent of nurses. And in the South, um, many of the nurses actually were told not to help out and um, the help became from the uh, infantrymen. Um, Miss Claire Barton rounded up supplies to help the soldiers during the Civil War and she later went on and founded the American Red Cross in New York in 1881. Can I ask you a few questions? Sure. Uh, do you know anything about the Civil War? Somewhat. Somewhat? Yeah. Do you know who the president was? Abraham Lincoln. Do you know what his wife did during the Civil War? She was a stay-at-home wife, I guess. No. <laughs> no, man. She was a nurse. And now we're going to focus on World War One and World War II, um, which was which is a big chunk of time with a lot going on. Tristan, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so World War One started in 1914 and ended in 1918. It was a short war. About 23,000 nurses went over um, seas in those four years, which seems like a lot for four years. Um, so the war basically started a lot of educational programs because nurses were going over there without much education experience. So um, they came up with like the nursing corps and things. So um, before going to over to war, they can do a 15 week program to kind of know how to care get the for base, basics. Yeah. 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 So get the basics because they were going over there kind of blind to yeah. is what they're going to encounter. Um, and upon returning home from the war, when the war was over, we had a mass um, nursing shortage that was due to um, nurses just not wanting to practice nursing after all the terrible things they saw. So, right. so um, and then World War II started in 1939, so it was quite a while after World War I, um, and it had a shortage of anesthesiology nurses, so nurse anesthetists. They had a lot of soldiers who needed surgeries, but nobody knew how to give the correct dosage, so they lost a lot of soldiers to um, overdoses. Um, so 
They've trained 200 nurses um, specifically with anesthesia, so that helped. Um, and then they also had a need for psych nurses. One in every 12 uh, soldiers came into the hospital for yeah, psychiatric. I saw that. Every, yeah, yeah, problems. Problems. So um, they had to train the nurses for that. And um, But basically, the, both world wars, we kind of had established who nurses were right. and what they did. Okay, so. and how, 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 do we, how, how do we evolve with the whole, just in the, like, the, the way care is given now? It was Did clean. It, it wasn't dirty anymore. Yeah. We had a process. There was an assessment. Yeah. That and the growth do. of where we started at in 1853 with the Korean War, and here we are. Oh, yeah. a whole completely different situation. Yeah, which is amazing. It's totally different. It yeah. is amazing. And nurses, it's just about that education that yeah. they got. And right back to Juan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got some questions yeah, regarding World War One and World War Two. Yeah. Can you give me your best answer? You ready? Okay. Do you know how many nurses served in World War II? No. Can you make a guess? Can I make a guess? A million. No, good guess. 60,000. 60,000. How close? For World War I. Do you know who is widely credited and famous for documenting the bravery of nurses during World War I? Okay. I should know this. But I don't. It was Miss Fairchild. Okay. Oh, well, thanks. Thank you, Juan. Okay, and now I just sort of want to talk about the advances that we had with the nursing in the Vietnam War. There was definitely some big things going on. There was. Um, Vietnam lasted from 1961 to 1973. It was actually the longest war that we had. Um, nurses volunteered, um, and they underwent a six-week training. Um, they actually performed duties that they did not learn in their nursing school, um, and they did lots of um, wound care and seen wounds that they had never seen before, um, and they did the tasks um, beyond their nursing scope of practice. Um, and flight nursing was actually established during this war, um, and Mildred Clark was a chief of army nurse corps from 61 to 67, um, from 1960. Can we do that again? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. No, you're good. I don't like being clearly. Go ahead. Are we doing the entire Ready? thing or report? Ready? Where am I? I'm going from which part? Mildred Clark. Okay. Just start a couple seconds before that. Just start talking and then he'll record it. You'll know where to start. Okay. Ready? I'll just start with flight nursing. Yeah. Five, four, three, two. Flight nursing was actually um, established during this war, um, and Mildred Clark who happened to be the chief of army nurse um, of the corps was from 1963 to 1967. And then we had Ann Hayes, who happened to be the chief of the army from 1967 to 1971. Um, and she actually went on and was appointed brigade general, um, which happened to be the first woman and first nurse in American military history. That's pretty So it was pretty cool. Yeah. I did not know that. Juan, what do you have for us over the Vietnam War? We're in the library today trying to interview people for the talk shows. So, I have somebody right here. Hello, my name is Quan. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, Victoria. Do you mind if I ask you a question? No, go ahead. No? Any kind of question? Sure, go ahead. What you know? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, uh, do you know what type of nurse was introduced during the Vietnam War? For, uh, no. No? Okay, well, going from the Vietnam War, let's talk about modern day nursing. Let's talk about the Iraq War. What's going on? What are the advances? Oh, okay, so, you know, we're living, breathing Iraq War right now. Right. It's been going on since 2001 when the um, planes were in the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Um, you know, by the 2000s, nursing has evolved medically. Technology has Tech evolved. We have we have soldiers that can lose a limb but gain it by a prosthetic, you know. So our cleanliness, our advances in technology is already there. The difference about this war would be using that technology right. for our education. Our, yeah, the education on you how to learn from do it. the things that yeah. you can. I mean, yeah. people can have surgery that on the field that didn't right. used to be able to happen. So you have to provide staff 
that's going to be able to go out there and think critically in yeah. those situations. And, and so that's, do it. And, and that's amazing because here we are, you go into school for one year, two years, and I, you, they send you out there and you're ready to go. Oh, yeah. And, and they, they just, just have all the technology. You know it. Yeah. And it, it's just amazing. And so really what this war has shown us about nursing is that those critical thinking skills are just the most important thing. You know, you have to go out, you have to use them. And they have a five-step nursing process for just war now. And, you know, part of it, the first step, you know, is getting that patient off the battlefield. Yeah. Um, caring for what you need to there, you know, applying traction, right. stopping bleeding there, but then taking them off and getting them on a base and we're safe. Yeah. And then, you know, steps later, if needed, sending them back to the U.S. to get the help that I mean, they need. Right. Yeah. So, and we're still living it. Who knows? Tomorrow there may be a new medical advancement for warfare, so... We'll just keep in watch. All right, thank you so much. Juan, what do you have for us? My name is Juan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Dr. Walsam. You want to ask me a question about the Iraq War? Go ahead. All right, you know how many levels are in the modern combat care plan? In the modern care, combat, combat care, plan. Yes. care plan? There are five or six. Is it five or six levels? Five or six? No, just five. Okay, I'm not new. It's been a while since I've been it's there. It's been a while? Yeah. And how long have you been teaching? Uh, nine years. Nine years? Yes. Aren't you ashamed? For what? For not knowing? Not actually new, but I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I just want to go ahead and thank everyone for tuning in today for the chat. We all learned a little bit. Right. Yeah, definitely. Right. Um, yeah. Definitely about the advances, just talking about history overall, and the where technology. we are with nursing today. Definitely. I want to thank everyone, and y'all have a good night. Thank you.